Welcome to the second part of this video series on shortwave radio listening for beginners. In this video I talk about some basic theory of shortwave radio listening. Let's jump right into the details. Last time we already mentioned the whole radio spectrum, where FM frequencies are located between 88 and 108 MHz, shortwave frequencies a bit lower, between 3 and 30 MHz. But what is Hertz, actually? Well, Hertz is the unit of frequency. Frequency measures the number of waves in a given time period. 1 Hertz is equivalent to 1 wave per second, as you can see on the animation. 1 kilohertz, equals 1000 hertz, 1 megahertz, equals 1000 kilohertz or 1 million hertz. 105 megahertz, in our example, by the way, equals 105 million waves per second. While frequency measures the number of waves in a time period, wavelength measures the physical length of the waves. Wavelength is the distance over which the wave's shape repeats, short waves are about 10 to 100 meters long. So, actually, not really short at all. You can convert hertz to meters and vice versa, that's why, some radio receivers will display both of these measures. For example, the 80 meters amateur band is located between 3500 and 3800 kilohertz. If you convert 80 meters to hertz, this is about 3747 kilohertz, so, this is, how those measures are related. Now you know, what is 105 megahertz in our example. But, what does FM mean? FM means, frequency modulation. Radio waves use frequency or amplitude modulation. This is the same as FM and AM. Modulation is the way, a signal is modified to a radio signal to transport information. Shortwave radio, just like medium or long wave, uses amplitude modulation, while the so-called very high frequencies or VHF, are using frequency modulation this is why, we call this higher range, actually FM radio. Amplitude modulation, or AM has an optimized version, the single side band, or SSV modulation. This is actually a kind of AM, for this reason, sometimes called, SSV, AM. SSV produces the radio waves with much less energy, for this reason, popular with radio amateurs, requires on the other hand a more complex receiver. That's why cheaper world receivers don't offer this option. LSB, or lower side band mode, and, USB, or upper side band mode, are the two variations of SSB modulation. If your radio supports, SSB mode, it means, you can use, lower, and, upper side band mode as well, with your receiver. And now, talk about the bands. This is easy. The shortwave spectrum is between 3 and 30 MHz. Parts of this spectrum, are called bands. For example, if you hear about the 80 meters, amateur band, it only refers to frequencies between 3500 and 3800 kHz. All bands, are part of the whole shortwave spectrum. Bands are targeted to broadcasting, radio amateurs, and other utilities, like, air traffic control or military services. More important for you, is the propagation. Shortwave reception, relies upon the reflection of signals, from the ionosphere. The ionosphere is constantly changing, depending on the strength of the sunlight. It may become more, or less reflective, or may start absorbing radio signals. For this reason, some frequencies are good for nighttime, others for the daytime. Generally speaking, lower frequencies, under 12 MHz working better nighttime, while higher frequencies, above 12 MHz working better daytime. This is, in my opinion, all that you have to know, about shortwave theory. 
Next time, we will talk about choosing the right equipment for shortwave radio listening. See you next time, comment below and thanks for watching.